Nine. Nine were given to the race of men who, above all else, desire power. Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and boy do I have a treat for you today. Some of the most classic sculpts from some of the earliest days of this wondrous hobby we all love, the Kings of Men. These have truly stood the test of time, and each one exudes so much character. Now I'm only going to be showing you the step-by-step -step recipe for one king today, otherwise this video is going to be about an hour long. But sit tight until the end where I go through the variations and recipes for the other three sculpts you get in the pack. Once my model was assembled and based with fine modelling sand, I applied an undercoat using Citadel Cal's Black Spray prior to painting. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to get started with these bad boys. So brush is ready guys, let's get painting! Base Colours The face and hands of the king were base coated using Bugman's Glow. His hair and beard were base coated then using grey seer. The outer robes were base coated with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Steel Legion Drab and Rhinox Hide. The cloak was base coated with a 3 part mix of Fondia Brown, Dryer Bark and Doom Ball Brown to give it a nice dark and chocolatey look. The inner cloth and inner drape was base coated with a 3 to 1 mix of Macrag Blue and Dark Reaper just to desaturate it ever so slightly. The scabbard was base coated using Doom Ball Brown. The sword blade and hilt were carefully picked out with lead belcher. Finally, the crown and any gold details across the scabbard were picked out with Gehenna's gold. Kingly skin. To start off, apply a pre-washed layer to the skin and hands with a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. The skin was then given a shade using thin down right and flesh shade. Once the wash is dried, layer over it again using pure cadian flesh tone, leaving the wash showing in the recesses and between each of the fingers. We're going to work up our layers and highlights slightly differently, working on the corrupted by the ring element a bit more, so making your skin a bit more unnatural in tone than we would normally. To achieve this we applied a highlight initially with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Ungore Flesh.
increasing the ungore flesh in the mix for the next highlight stage to further push the gaunt, drawn and sickly hue we want for our King of Men. The eye recesses were then painted in with Abaddon Black. Then give him a few dots of deep kin flesh just to finish them off. This will give him a slightly glazed, lifeless look to his eyes. Grey hair. The hair and beard were shaded with some heavily diluted Mechanica Standard Grey. This is much softer than non oil would be and will tone the hair much more gently when it's dry. Once the hair is dry, start relayering over, once again using Grace here, focusing on picking out the individual strands to create movement and the initial definition across his face and head. Start working in white scar to the grey sear and start building up the highlights over the hair. Add the white scar in gradually over multiple layers to get a smooth transition from the recesses through to the lighter hairs. Finally, working our way up to pure white scar for the final extreme edge highlight for this poor old man. When you're happy with how this looks, apply a glaze over all the hair now with extremely thin down numb oil just to tie all these layers and highlights together. Brown robes. I'm basically going to be using more or less every single brown for these robes at some point or another, so I hope you enjoy your brown tones. Firstly, a manual shade was applied to the outer robes by adding in dryer bark for the Steel Legion Rhinoxide base mix. This was then pushed further by applying an all over shade with Agrax Surf Shade to tone the robes and further define the recess shade. At this stage as well, apply this wash to the entirety of the cloak as well, so you keep a uniform tone and texture across both areas. When these are dry and you're happy with your toning stages, start relayering over all the robes now using pure Steel Legion Drab, leaving the shade and wash showing in the recesses. You may have to apply this in a few thinner layers, but Steel Legion Drab doesn't necessarily cover particularly well in one solid coat. Apply a second layer now with a 2 to 1 mix of Steel Legion Drab and Bane Blade Brown, working this layer up towards the most pronounced and raised areas of material. This will start building up a slight pastel look and desaturate the richness of the Steel Legion Drab. For the highlight stages, I started adding in Ushapti Bone to the mix in gradual increments to avoid overblowing the hue we've built up. The Ushapti Bone will help the natural pastel look from the Bane Blade Brown and provide a more natural progression through the highlight stages.
adding more Reshakti bone in the mix for the final highlight stages. You can add as much as you like here, but I recommend not going further than a 50-50 split between the Ashabti bone and the layering mix to keep a slightly washed out, almost dull look to our Corrupted King. Scrag Brown was then added to the base coat mix for the cloak and applied as an initial layer. At this stage, enunciating and strengthening the chocolatey rich tones we have in place, ready for the desaturation of the following layer and highlighting stages. With your blocking layer in place, start adding Carrack Stone gradually into the mix and as you did with the robes, start pushing these layers towards the raised and more prominent areas of cloth and material. Continue desaturating the cloak very gradually by adding more and more Carrick Stone into the mix. This is a careful balance if you don't want to fully lose the tones of the Doombull and Thondir from the base coat mix and also don't want to create too much of a contrast over such a large surface area of model. Remember you can always add more Carrick if you need to but you can't take it away once it's been added. Again, to help mirror and complement the tones of the outer robes, start working in Ushabti Bone into the mix for your highlighting stages. And again, as with the robes, you can add this in as many stages as you wish, but be careful again not to overdo it. Blue cloth. The blue cloth was given an all over shade first off using Drakenhof Nightshade. Now the blue is going to provide a really nice spot colour that's going to help break up the monotony of all the browns and natural tones used thus far. Once your wash is dry, apply a layer adding Thunderhawk Blue into the original base coat mix. This will help to brighten but also gently desaturate the tone so it blends in slightly with the painting method used for the browns. Increasing the amount of Thunderhawk in the mix to a 50-50 split, working it up to further frame and define the flow of the blue cloth. Finally, add a small amount of Fenrisian Grey into the mix for the final edge highlight. You're looking at 25 to 35% addition to the overall mix here. Finishing details. The gold details and scabbard were given a targeted shade using Agrax Earth Shade.
An edge layer was then applied to the scabbard using Tusk Warfare. Followed by a further highlight with a 2 to 1 mix of Tusk Warfare and Ushabti Bone. All the gold details were then carefully framed with Canoptech Alloy to give the gold a more washed out, worn and aged look. The trim around the hem of the cloak was then very carefully picked out with Rune Lord Brass. The belt around the midsection was carefully picked out with Dryer Bark. then given a quick edge highlight using Gawthor Brown. The sword blade and hilt were then given a targeted wash with Nun Oil, and once dry, carefully edge highlighted using Iron Breaker. There we are, a finished King of Men. What an absolute pleasure to get the chance to paint up such a classic sculpt. You can find the method for our basing over on our 5 minute basing playlist, along with plenty of other quick and easy basing tutorials. It's so easy to create great variation over all these sculpts with minimal effort and worry. Let me show you the other three and the paints used to bring each one to life in their own right. This King's Cloak was built up with rich, vibrant red hues, working their way through Evil Sun Scarlet and Troll Slayer Orange. The robes were painted with Doom Ball Brown and worked up through more rich hues with the Scrag and Deathclaw Brown, and these all contrast really well with the slightly more muted inner robes, which are painted with a mix of Xandry Dust and Rhinox Hide, layered up with Carrack Stone. King number three has some very disparate tones throughout. The rich, kingly hues of the inner robes, achieved with Kaldor Sky layering up through Altdorf and Kalgar Blue, contrast really well with the much more muted, leathery look of the cloak, which relied on very light browns and beiges to layer and highlight. King number four is probably the most vibrant overall, with a more burnished gold look to the crown and details, brought up through Retributor and Orakama Gold. The robes in turn used yet another different blue recipe, edging towards a more turquoise look with Thousand Suns Blue, layered up through Araman and highlighted with Baharov Blue. I've genuinely enjoyed painting up each of these King of Men models. Again, it's so easy to create four truly unique models from minor variations to your painting recipes and still give them a characteristic kingly look they exude from their poses. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. As always, please like, share and subscribe. It's always greatly appreciated and really helps out the channel. Until next time guys, take care and as always, happy hobbying.